Hello. Hello, welcome to my Facebook Live. Welcome to all of those that will watch live and those that will watch the replay. As you come in, go ahead and share the video. I want to speak to you today from just something that the Lord encouraged me with. And I want to encourage you today with what he encouraged me with. <laughs> so as I was spending time with the Lord this morning, I just began to be in a posture of worship. I just began to be in a posture of worship. And I want to just share with you something that stood out to me as I was posturing myself before the Lord. In worship, and I heard this, the battle isn't yours, it belongs to the Lord. That's what I heard, and that's what I want to speak to you on today, and that's what I want to share to you. As you come in, you'll need to give Facebook or StreamYard permission before you comment, before you... Um, comment in this thread, you'll need to give StreamYard permission to be able to comment. So as you come in, go ahead and type this. This battle is not mine. This battle doesn't belong to me. This battle is not mine to fight. This battle, I didn't choose it. This battle I didn't start it. This battle, I didn't pick it. So the Lord began to really highlight that for me. And I just began to posture myself with that revelation. I just began to say, yeah, this battle doesn't belong to me. God started this thing. God will finish this thing. He will perfect everything that concerns me. He will perfect everything that he started. So this battle is not a battle that I will fight. This battle is not a battle that I have to um, exert a lot of energy in because God sent the battle. He knows how to finish the battle. God started the battle. He knows how to finish the battle. So this battle doesn't belong to you. This battle is a battle that has been waging for a very long time, you're just caught in the crossfire. So let's pray before we share what God just began to met, speak to me. And I just begin to meditate on this as I begin to just posture my heart in worship and ministry to the Lord. Father, we thank you for this time of sharing. We thank you, Father, for your grace, your mercy. It is for your grace and your mercy that we are not consumed. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. Great is your, your plans for us, Father. We honor you. We honor this time of sharing. We honor, Father, what you are doing in, in the earth. We thank you, Father, for even the earth is groaning and travailing for the manifestations of the sons of God. And Lord, we are your sons and daughters, and we want to manifest who you are in our lives, in the earth, that you may be glorified. Father, we pray, Father, for your will to be done in this time of sharing in your, your way. Father, to be uh, made known unto your children. We thank you, Father. It's in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. So 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. He said, listen carefully, all you people, of Judah and you inhabitants of Israel. You inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, the Lord says this to you. So he's talking to the people and he's talking to leadership. 
Be not afraid or dismayed at this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Friends, we fight battles over land. We fight battles over territories. We fight battles in the natural realm and we fight battles in the spiritual realm because the battle already has been waging way before we got here. Because we are the Imagio Day, because we are made in the image of God, because we are God's children and God's, God loves us, the enemy wants to wage war against anything that God loves. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 through 15, I just began to meditate on these particular scriptures and I began to just really go into some worship and praise and ministering before the Lord. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted from him, look around from where you are to the north and the south, to the east and the west, all the land that you see. I will give to you and your offspring forever. So battles, when we fight battles, when we go into combat in our lives, it is God who initiates this fight. It is God who goes with you. It is God who is sending you into a battle. Why? Because of a vision he is giving you. Because of a word he has spoken to you because of a promise that he has given you. He, he's telling Abram in Genesis chapter 13 that what he is giving him is so vast that he needs to look to specific areas. He had to look to the north, the south, the east, and the west to see what God had given him. This battle, this territory that God wanted to give Abraham. Battles are fought over land and territory. So this territory spanned from the east to, to, to the west, to the north, to the south. God was giving Abraham and his offspring this territory, this land. So a territory is a geographical area belonging to or under the jurisdiction of a governmental authority. So when God wants to give us territory or land, it is because this territory or land belongs to God, but something ends up happening. Somebody relinquishes the territory to the enemy. Somebody allows the enemy to come in and subdue or overtake that territory. Remember, a territory is a geographical area belonging to or under the jurisdiction of a governmental authority. The word of God says this about Jesus, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, meaning everything pertaining to government, everything pertaining to authority in the earth. Jesus was carrying, carrying it. Jesus had the government upon his shoulders. He was carrying a governmental authority, a governmental assignment. And when we come into the body of Christ and when we reign and rule with Jesus Christ, we too come underneath that same authority. We too come underneath that same grace because we are co-heirs and co-laborers with Christ Jesus. But what ends up happening is our territory or our land that we are supposed to subdue and have dominion over in the earth sometimes gets overtaken by the enemy. The enemy comes in and cuts in on us and he comes and subdues our territory. He comes in and he over, 
um, powers us. He overwhelms us. He causes there to be legal ramifications where he can come in and take our territory. So when we come into the knowledge of God and God wants to position us to have dominion as Jesus Christ originally died and finished the work of the cross so that we could <clears throat> experience the abundant life that he died for us to have so that we could go back to the original intent as much as possible while we're here until Jesus Christ comes back again and all power and authority is given unto him. So, and he then rules and reign, uh, rules and reigns as God originally intended for it to be in the earth. So we have this territory in the realm of the spirit. There are areas that God has given you to govern. There are areas that God has ordained for your family to govern and rule and reign. Genesis chapter one, verse 28 through 30 says, God blessed them and he said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. This is God talking to Adam and Eve. After he had created Adam and Eve, he began to edify them. He began to give them commands. He began to speak unto them, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea. He is telling them what territory, what rulership, what reign they were supposed to have in the earth and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. So God has given Adam and Eve all of this rulership, all of this territory, all of this dominion. He's telling them that this is yours. I am giving this to you. Just as he told Abram, I'm giving you this land from the north, south, east, and the west. All of this belongs to you. And to all the beasts of the earth, he tells Adam and Eve, and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures <clears throat> that move along the ground, everything that has breath, uh, has everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant of food. And it was so. So God made this command. And we know that God is a God who cannot lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, it shall be. So it was so. But something happened to the territory that Adam and Eve was given. The territory was stolen by the enemy when Adam and Eve... Um, bowed to the dictates and the beguilement of the enemy through the flesh, through the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. They surrendered through disobedience or um, rejecting God's will and God's command. They surrendered their dominion unto the enemy. They surrendered their territory. Type in the comments, take back territory. And what is happening in the earth now is so many individuals are waking up in the spirit. The spiritual battle is waging and it's in our front door. The spiritual battle is no longer behind closed doors. The spiritual battle is coming right to our fingertips. The spiritual battle is right in our faces. And we have to take back whatever territory God has given your family, whatever land that God has promised you, whatever promises God has given you. Has he promised you wealth? Has he promised you a sound mind? There are written uh, places in the word of God that God has given us, but there is also things that God has personally promised you. God has personally told you, this is who you are in the earth. This is what I gave you. God spoken dreams into your heart. And it seems like 
taking that territory. Standing in that place is a hard fight. It's such a fight to get that business off of the ground. It's such a fight to get your family to see the truth. It's such a fight to get to where you desire to be, to ascend in that career, to break that glass ceiling, to get your family to know God and be uh, a believers. It's such a fight. But here is the thing. There's the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why. <laughs> who, what, when, where, why, and how. Type that in the comments. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. And I begin to sit with God and I begin to ask these questions because I understand when he spoke that word to me today, Sherry, this battle does not belong to you. This battle was waging way before you got here. There were others that came alongside of me and fought this battle. If God has opened your eyes to truth, he is trying to reveal unto you where the battle is. He is trying to reveal unto you who he is. He is trying to reveal unto you what this battle entails and what you are fighting for. We have to understand that we are not fighting in a natural realm. We will use the natural things, but this natural realm is um, a mirage to what's really taking place. Again, this battle started way before you got here. This battle started a long time ago. You're just coming alongside God and playing your part. So who is this battle about? This battle is between God and Satan. And what I saw in the realm of the spirit is I saw two individuals on two opposite ends. And I saw us in the middle. Humanity is in the middle of this battle that has been waging way before we got here. There were others who fought in this battle. Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Different individuals throughout history fought in the same battle. What are they fighting for? Territory. What are they fighting for? Spiritual truths. What are they fighting for? The freedom of humanity. What are they fighting for? To lift up humanity from the oppression of the enemy, from the lies, from the beguilement, from the sin nature. This battle is about the sin nature. So we are caught in the crossfire. So one of the things that happened when Adam and Eve began to be beguiled, they were tricked, they were lured into a situation by the enemy because of the lust of their flesh. They began to relinquish without knowing they didn't understand the spiritual ramifications of their actions. And sometimes we make choices, we make decisions, and we don't understand the spiritual ramifications behind that decision. We don't understand how it's going to affect humanity down the line. We don't understand what we're giving up. Adam and Eve didn't understand that they were giving up a priestly heritage. They didn't understand they were giving up up purity. They didn't understand they were giving up dominion over the earth. They didn't understand they were giving up dominion over animals, over the fish of the sea, over the birds. They, were, they didn't understand that they were giving up spiritual ground. They didn't understand that they were yielding their hearts and giving their hearts over to the enemy. So when you make choices, when you, um, decide to follow the flesh versus the spirit. You are giving up territory and everything that we have been through as a global, as a global body, as a global people all across the world. This battle is about territory. Type in the comments. It's about territory. It's about territory. Territory for you and territory for the global church. Territory for the body of Christ. Territory for God. COVID-19 is about territory. The Chinese, uh, the battle, all of it is about territory. The Chinese coming against the United States, it's about territory. It's about 
who is the stronger territory, who has strength, who has power. But one thing you have to do in the midst of this battle, while you're between God and you're between Satan, you're going to have to pick a side. You're going to have to know what you believe. You're going to have to pick a side. You cannot be twixing between two opinions. You can't just stand there while this battle is raging, watching it happen. You're going to have to pick a side. And whose side you are on determines the outcome of this battle. And God is positioning his sons and daughters who at who he has had in boot camp with him. Those that have fought personal battles are coming to the forefront. Mm, I feel this thing to lead the body of Christ into a triumphant a revival to lead the body of Christ into the greatest harvest of souls. The enemy has fought, the enemy has fought, but we as a body of believers are coming into a greater manifestation of the power of God. We're getting ready to see those who have been in boot camp, those who have been in personal battles, begin to ascend unto a high place with the sword of the Lord in their mouth with the armor of the Lord on, ready to lead the body of Christ into a triumphant victory, ready to lead the body of Christ into a triumphant revival where souls begin to flock stadiums, where souls begin to come into churches saying, what must I do to be saved? So I want to implore you and admonish you to choose a side. In this intense battle, in what we are facing, the enemy is no longer doing things behind closed doors. There are no longer black markets. Uh, voodoo is being sold in open uh, spaces. Um, uh, tarot cards, sage, and all of these things concerning evil is no longer in the back room, guys, but it is up close and personal. The enemy has intensified his attack. The enemy has intensified his lies. The enemy has intensified this battle to the degree that people are succumbing through the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. People are relinquishing what they believe for what the enemy is presenting. Don't give in to the okie doke. Don't give in to the flesh. Stand your ground. Hold up your weapons and fight. So the battle is between Satan, God, and you and I are caught in the crossfire. But how we engage in the battle is we choose a side. And when we choose a side, we have to arm ourselves for the battle, whether it's on a global scale or whether it's in your family. Maybe your family is far from faith. Maybe your family doesn't know God. Maybe your family needs to come out of religion. Maybe your family needs to come to a place of peace. Maybe your family needs to come to a place of rest. Maybe your family needs to be reconciled. Maybe your marriage needs to be reconciled and God needs to remove strife from your family. Whatever place that you find yourself in. God starts the battle and God finishes the battle. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. When you face battle, he will arm you with everything you need to win and come out victorious. Type in the comments, I win. So Jesus is the author and Jesus is the finisher. Jesus will give you the faith to uh, wage war, and Jesus will give you the faith to stand for the victory. So Holy Spirit works in us both to will and to do of God's good pleasure. So we have to understand this, Yolanda, that 
all of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are all working with us to accomplish the will of the Father. It is the Father's will that God intercedes for. And it is the Father's will that the Holy Spirit begins to work out in us. He begins to transform us. He begins to open our eyes to what we are fighting. He begins to say, your child is at risk. They're doing this at school. You begin to see from another perspective. You begin to take a higher place of uh, seeing. You begin to be seated in heavenly places and you are no longer engaged in the battle, but you are seated from a high place and you get to see things with an aerial view. You then become one that is seated with Christ. And if I'm seated with Christ and I'm Christ is in intercession, I too can join in with Christ and intercede for the Father's will as it is in heaven, so let it be on earth. So Holy Spirit works with us. Type in the comments, work with me, God. Holy Spirit works in us both to will and to do of God's good pleasure. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 uh, through 18 says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God. So when we face battle, when things are happening in your life and you're saying, why is this happening? Why are my children fighting? Why are my finances like this? Why is my marriage this way? Why am I not experiencing the abundant life that Jesus died? Why the manifestations and the promises of God are not happening? Why is my child given over to perversion? Why is my husband committing adultery? Why are these acts that are not righteous and holy, but bringing death, bringing destruction, bringing brokenness into my life? Why am I experiencing these things? One of things you got to know. You got to know where you stand. You got to make a decision. You got to know what you're fighting for. There is territory in the realm of the spirit. Somebody gave up territory. Type in the comments, take back territory. And I want every one of you right now that's watching this live and that will watch the replay to determine in your heart, to determine in your mind that you will be one that partners with God to take back territory, take back the hearts of your children, take back the finances that God promised you. Take back that business idea. Take back that ministry that the enemy stole from you. The enemy cuts in on us and he stops us from obeying the truth. What is the truth? What God says about us. What is the truth? Where Jesus is leading us. What is the truth? That promise that was spoken into your heart. That God idea to break you out of poverty. Take it all back. So finally, Finally, my brethren, he's getting to a place of rest. He's resting his argument on this. Finally, this is what you've got to do. This is how you win the battle. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stance. So when we take a side, we have to take a stance. We have to put our feet down. We have to be determined that I'm going to win this thing. I'm going to see this thing all the way through. I'm coming out victorious and I'm coming out with the spoils of the war. And we have to stand against the devil's schemes. So what he tries to do in the battle, he tries to throw schemes. He tries to throw lies. He tries to throw accusations against you to get you to put down your weapons and take off your armor. So for we struggle, listen guys, the battle is not against flesh and blood. The battle is not against your husband. Type in the comments, it's not flesh and blood. I got to take my eyes off of that. He says the battle is not against flesh and blood, but against 
rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So where did the enemy gain dominion in the beginning? He gained dominion because the thing that God hated, he took it and put it inside of man. He took and he put sin in the hearts of man. So when man became a corrupted being, when man it, when sin entered the heart of man, God said man cannot have dominion and authority because sin is now in their heart. So I have to devise a plan to change this thing back to rewrite the story, to start things all over again. So this is where we have the entrance of Jesus Christ. There is always strategy for your battle. Whatever you up against, God always had a strategy before you even got in the fight, before you even knew that your son or your daughter had chose perversion, before you even knew that your marriage was on the rocks, before you even knew you were going to get the pink slip. God already had a strategy in place and in mind for your victory. So therefore he said, this is not against flesh and blood. Take your eyes off of people. Take your eyes off of the president. Take your eyes off of the governmental authority. Take your eyes off of TikTok. Take your eyes off of social media influences. Put your eyes and your gaze upon Jesus Christ and begin to position yourself with the decision and a determination that you're coming out of this dispensation of time. You're coming out of this experience stronger. You're coming out with territory. You're coming out taking back ground. You're coming out taking back your sanity. You're coming out of this thing with your children saved. You're coming out of this thing with your husband saved. You're coming out of this thing with a business idea. You're coming out of this thing with a book idea. You're coming out of this thing with greater influence. You're coming out of this thing whole. I won't be broken coming out of 20 and 23. When this thing is done, when it's all said and done, I'm coming out with the spoils of the war. So our, our battle, Dr. Neal, it's not flesh and blood. It's not against our children. It's not against our brothers and sisters in Christ. It's not against theology and understanding theology, but this battle is about winning the hearts of humanity because the more individuals that have a revival upon their hearts, the more individuals that are reintroduced to Christ, the more individuals that we take back from the enemy, the more the devil's kingdom falls. So it's not about flesh and blood, but it's about getting demonic influence out of the heart of humanity. It's about getting demonic influence out of the ears and the hearts of your children. It's about getting demonic influences out of your money. It's about getting demonic influence out of your understanding. It's about getting, to, oh, I feel God. It's about getting demonic influence out of everything that pertains to you. So take back territory. Type in the comments, I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. So he says, therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, now, what's the day of evil? The day of evil is your greatest trial. The great day of evil is something that comes to test you, something that comes to knock you off of your square, something that the enemy sends to knock you out of the church, something that the enemy sends to cause offense against God, something that the enemy sends that is so evil and destructive that you want to give up on life, that you want to throw in the towel. So if you have on the full armor of God, if you pick a side, if you make a decision, if you arm yourself to be with God, to take back the territory that he gave you. Listen here, some of your parents had territory that was stolen from them. Some of your parents had promises that were stolen from them. Some of your parents had 
things that God promised them that they never laid a hold of. They never actualized. They never uh, envisioned. They never saw it because they relinquished the territory. But God is waking you up so that you can be one that puts on the whole armor of God and say, God, I see what you promised them. God, I see what you're saying. God, I see the generational blessings. God, I see how my son can be used by you. God, I see the gifts that he placed in you. I see the blessings that you placed over his life. God, I'm going to stand still. I'm going to stand firm to take back territory. Where is the territory? In the heart of man. The territory is in the heart. So if I can position myself to posture with God, to be used by God, to use the weapons of war, to take back the territory of the heart, the heart, the heart, type in the comments. It's about the heart. Type in the comments. It's about the heart. See, we look at the things that they're doing, but it's a territory in the heart. The enemy came in the territory of the heart of Adam and Eve. This is how he was able to take dominion. This is how God had to destroy humanity because they kept getting more vile and evil and the hearts of men just got more and more corrupt more and more evil to the degree that he said, I have to destroy man, preserve a remnant and Noah because he was righteous, because he feared God, because he obeyed God was preserved. Why? Because evil had not corrupted him. So God wanted to start over with somebody evil. But in Revelation, in the in the New Testament, it says that it will be like again as in the days of Noah. What does that mean? Men will still be evil. Men will still have why? Because we need to take back territory. We need to take back the heart of humanity. We need revival in the earth. We need sons and daughters who have one intimate personal battles in their homes who can withstand in the global place in the marketplace and cry out that God still reigns on the throne so verse 14 says stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist so this is the armor that we have to put on the belt of truth the breastplate of righteousness having our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of, of peace. The shield of faith that extinguishes all the flaming arrows of the evil one. The helmet of salvation. The sword of the spirit. And pray in the spirit on all occasions. So not only do we have to have this armor on. But in order for this armor to work. Now, listen here. Mm, my God, my God today. I just heard something. Holy Ghost just said something to me. This armor is in the secret place because then in verse 18, he says, and pray. This is your spiritual warfare. This is your spiritual activity, not fight, not call people out, not blast people. He says, and pray after you get this armor on. It says, now pray in the spirit on all occasions. So anytime, my God, anytime I come in contact with evil, I need to be praying in the spirit with all kinds of prayers and requests. This armor is in the secret place. He who dwells in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the earth. Is this blessing you? If this is blessing you, type in the comments, it's blessing me. So I don't fight this thing arguing. I don't fight this thing uh, uh, uh trying to plead my case to the enemy. I don't fight this thing going back and forth with people. I don't fight this thing looking at flesh and blood, but the battleground is in my secret time. Mm. The battleground is in my prayer time. The battleground, I don't have to fight with my kids. All I gotta do is pray. See, all I got to do is put on the armor. I got to put on my helmet. I got to put on my feet, my feet. So I got to walk this thing out. 
I got to begin to walk this thing out with the armor because the enemy in my daily life is going to send things at my mind. He's going to try to make accusations. He's going to try to come against me. So I have to have the sword and I have to be able to be skilled in welding the sword and using the sword. So if I use the sword, I have to know what the sword is. And I have to know that the sword is the word of God that cuts every accusation that cuts everything, every high thing that the enemy will sin will fall down because I am one that has chosen a side. I am one that has gotten within the mission of God to take back territory. Type in the comments, this battle's not mine. The battle in my marriage, it's not mine. The battle in my home with my children, in my finances, in the ministry, in the politician, in the political arena, uh, on social media. I don't have to fight. I don't have to get in the comments. I don't have to defend myself. All I have to do is put the armor on and pray. Okay? So let me hear you. Let me show you the strategies. The I got to pray one in the spirit. Type in the comments in the spirit. I can't pray with my carnal eyes. I have to see this thing through the eyes and the lens and the perspective of the spirit. So I have to take a higher route. I have to take a higher place because I am seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. So if mm, my God, if I'm seated with Christ in the heavenly realms and he is now the intercessor, my God today. I have to take a position of intercession. Type in the comments, I'm an intercessor. I take a position of intercession and I hear what Jesus is praying and I come into agreement. <laughs> oh my God today. I hear because I'm seated with him. I am in him. Come on, come on. So he's going to give me what to pray. I'm going to hear what the spirit is saying. The spirit of God is revealing to me what Jesus is praying about. And this is what he says on all occasions. So in every situation I get into, come on, somebody. Come on, all occasions. Type in the comments. I don't have to argue all occasions. I don't have to defend myself all occasions. I don't have to worry where the money is coming from all occasions. Whatever battle you get in, whatever you face, whatever evil day comes to your doorstep, whatever you are afraid of, whatever thing that the enemy is taunting you with, tormenting you with, get in your position, get in your posture with all, listen, this is what chapter 18, let me give you out this scripture again so you guys can go and look this up. Ephesians chapter six, verse 10 through 18. So 18 says, with all kinds of prayers and requests. Woo! Jacqueline, that just blessed me. This is the strategy, guys, right here. All kinds of prayers and requests. So not only is he telling me the way you win this battle, the way you fight with me, the way you come alongside me, because God, it's the battle. Remember, I told you the battle was already waging. It was already happening before you woke up. The battle was already happening before you even got saved. The battle was already on. You're just the Imagio day. You decided to take a side. So now the enemy is coming at you because you're deciding to take a side because there is an anointing on your life. There's an anointing on your family. There is a calling. There's a promise. Somebody somewhere relinquish authority. And so God is waking you up. If you're on this live right now, and if you'll watch the replay, I want to tell you, wake up. Wake up from your spiritual slumber. Wake up from your apathy. Wake up from being indecisive. Wake up from thinking it's just going to pass. Wake up from being weak. Wake up from being a, 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 a part of a, someone that's watching on the sidelines. Choose a side, put on your armor, take back territory and engage in the battle. So he says, this battle is going to be won in the spirit with your armor on and your strategy is all kinds of prayers and requests. So if Jesus is on, is sitting on the throne in the seat of power, he is making intercession for the saints. 
So then if I am seated with him, this is to my posture, Jacqueline. This is to my posture, Bridget. I am making intercession for the saints. I am making intercession for my husband. I am making intercession with all kinds of prayers. Prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of intercession, prayers of um, uh, salvation, all kinds of prayers as I'm led by Christ Jesus. I am making these prayers and requests before God with this in mind. Be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Now, Car Carissa, why do we have to do this? Because there are spiritual laws that God himself does not violate. When he gave dominion of the earth to man, what he was saying is, I'm giving this to you. This is my gift to you. This is your inheritance. This is what I am giving to for you to have dominion. So he does not invade man's business without partnering with man. He does not do anything in the earth illegally because man has dominion. When man lost dominion, that dominion was given over to the enemy through the hearts of individuals. But Jesus, when he died and went to hell, he got back the keys so that those that would partner with him can still have that same dominion and ruling and reigning in their lives. So God doesn't do anything in the earth without the partnership of man. So we have to begin to speak what God wants in the earth. The first step of manifesting God's will is through thought. Type in the comments, bring my thoughts higher. The first realm of manifesting what God wants in the earth is through thought. There's an idea that comes to you, right? So for, for example, maybe your family wealth was taken from your family, okay? Maybe your family at one point owned properties. Maybe your family at one point owned real estate and a thought comes to you, but you, know, but you guys don't have that anymore. So a thought comes to you to get into real estate, but to get into real estate, you got to leave that job. So then there's going to be a war that takes place between that higher thought that came to you. My family used to own real estate. And this is just an example. So sometimes the first realm of getting God's will from, earth, from heaven to earth, okay? Getting God's will from heaven to earth comes in thought, okay? So it may come in thought first. Then that thought dwells in the heart. And the heart meditates on it. The heart turns it over and begins to desire it. T type in the comments. Then it dwells in the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, here is the thing. If what's in your heart doesn't come out of your mouth, then God will employ one of the fivefold ministry gifts. They are here to perfect the saints, to bring the saints into the place of maturity, to bring the saints into the place of fullness, of the abundant life, to help and aid believers in being who God has created them to be in the earth. So if it doesn't come out of your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if that thought, the things that you think on, then begin to be, uh, places that you um, believe system. So then if I believe the thought that God sent to me, you need to be on Facebook Live. Then my heart's going to desire to do that because now I desire to follow after that thought. And sometimes uh, we talked about dreams the other day. This is the same way that dreams are born or dreams come to us, desires and thoughts. So first manifestation is in thought. Second manifestation, it becomes something you desire. Thought, desire, speaking it out, okay? So thought, desire, spoken word. The voice activates the will of God. The voice announces what God wants to do. 
when we come into salvation, we have to confess with our mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in our hearts, right? That Christ died on the cross. Then we are saved. The, the voice and the thought is such a powerful supernatural exchange. So much so that it births spiritual realities. Okay. So the prophet, the prophets speak forth the will of God in the earth. The prophets carry an assignment and a mantle to speak out. So sometimes things within your heart, and I don't know if this has ever happened to somebody, and you can type in the comments that if it's ever happened to you, a prophet will speak something out that's already been in your heart, a thought that you already had about yourself, about the direction God was taking you, about your next season, about ministry. The prophet is the one because maybe you didn't speak it, but out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So then there will be two or three that speak forth the same thing that came as thought and desire within your heart. Or maybe you begin to pray it. So then God sends prophets along to partner with the word that he already sent. Okay, so what, what types of battles do you face financial battle, domestic battle, mental battle, generational battle, physical battle, emotional battle, uh, any type of battle you may face in life. God has a strategy and a remedy for it. God has a specific strategy for you to win, but you got to decide. Type in the comments. I got to make that decision. I got to choose a side. I got to get on the right side, engage, put on my armor. So when this battle was waging long ago, this battle started in heaven. When Lucifer decided or a thought in his heart, thought that he could um, ascend into a high place, that he could exalt himself, that he could gain spiritual promotion void of God. So when we have a thought pattern that is void of God's thoughts, it is either coming from our soulish realm or it is coming from the demonic realm. So we have to bring our thoughts to a higher place. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are holy, righteous. If there be anything, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, Think on these things. So when you bring your thoughts to a higher realm, you then become a conduit that God can wage a successful war through. God doesn't start anything that he doesn't plan to win. If God told you this is what his intentions was, if God told you this is what, we're, what is going to happen, as you position yourself, as you get in the place of prayer with that armor on, remember the battle is not against flesh and blood. So you won't be arguing with people. You won't be going back and forth. You won't engage in the accusations and the uh, uh, assuming the character uh, assassinations, the betrayals, the um, uh, uh, financial battles. You won't begin to engage in that type of warfare. This warfare has to be won in the secret place. So we're not going to wrestle against people. But what we're going to do after we have made these prayers, after we have made these petitions, after we know that we, our prayers have reached heaven, just like Daniel, Daniel was praying and fasting before the Lord. He humbled himself to hear God. He humbled himself to hear what Jesus was interceding for. He humbled himself to partner with God so that what was being done in heaven could manifest on earth as it is in heaven. So let it be on earth. What does that mean in heaven? It's meant for you to be wealthy. In heaven, it's meant for you to ascend in the earth. In heaven, it's meant for you to live without depression. In heaven, it's meant for your children. There is a, 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 a mandate for your children, who they are called to be. So as it is in heaven, God wants us to partner with him so that 
same thing can manifest on earth. So after I sent all of these prayers up, after I've interceded, after I petitioned God, after I made all of my requests, then this is what God says, send Judah first. There are some battles that after you have made all of your prayers and petitions, all you have to do is worship before the Lord. And as you worship, the enemy will destroy himself. As you worship, the enemy will fall by his own sword. As you petition yourself to exalt the Lord, to tell him how mighty he is, to tell him how awesome he is, to thank him for all of the things that he's done already that you'll begin to see the enemy fall. You'll begin to see those walls crumble. You'll begin to see the things that you fought years and years to manifest. You'll begin to see that ground and territory be relinquished. You'll begin to see the favor of God on your business. You'll begin to see your family begin to reconcile. And when people's hearts were hard, you'll begin to see those hard, hard, hard hearts soften. You'll begin to see people come together in a greater way. You'll begin to see ministries come back to life. You'll begin to see the power of God manifest in your prayer time. You'll begin to see you and your family come on one accord. You'll begin to see revival take place in your own home. It's about territory on a global scale. It's about territory. Territory where? In the hearts. Territory in the hearts of humanity. So we have to pray that God will send a revival. First, you want the revival to begin in your home. You want the revival first to begin in you. You want the revival first to begin in your children, in your husband, in your nieces and nephews. You want your family to know God. You want their hearts saved. You want their hearts delivered. If you can take back territory in your own home, you can be one that will lead the church on to victory. Come on, because you've got the strategy. You know where the battle is. You know how to wage war. You know how to sustain yourself in prayer and not get sidetracked by what you see. And the just shall live by faith. Type in the comments, I'm living by faith. I'm living by faith in every word that proceeds, that comes forth out of the mouth of God. I'm so glad you guys joined me on today. I pray you were inspired. I pray you were empowered. I pray this encouragement uh, impacted you to the, to the degree that you will go back to the secret place and say, God, I'm ready to take a side. I'm ready to take, make a decision. I'm ready to take territory. I'm ready to live by faith. I want to invite you to our conference, April 28th through the 29th, women of weight. We have virtual tickets. We have, um, uh, in-person tickets that you can purchase. We have powerful women that are coming to impart into you, to uh, ignite you, to edify you, to live in a realm of victory. There is so much value in God's daughters. There is so much that God is birthing through you. And you want to get in an atmosphere of birthing. You want to get in an atmosphere that you can be pushed and edified and that you can hear the prophetic message of God concerning you. If you are one that maybe you struggle in hearing the voice of God, maybe you are indecisive, maybe you don't know what the territory is, get in the room, type in the comments, get in the room. You want to be in the place April 29th, April 28th through the 29th. Um, there's an events tab on my Facebook page that you can uh, link up with, uh, type that you're going, get on the website and purchase your ticket. If you were inspired by this, these women that are partnering with this kingdom assignment are women of integrity. They are women who love God. They are women who have chosen a side, women who have taken back territory in their own lives, women who I have witnessed throughout years who have served the Lord faithfully, pastors, prophets, 
uh, evangelists who have spoken into my life with a sure word from God. So I would not bring anybody to God's people that I didn't believe that carry an assignment, that carry a message. And these women will be there. It's going to be such a powerful time of impartation, of revival. I am one ha who had to live out what I'm telling you guys today. I had to take back territory. I had to take back ground. I had to take back influence. I had to take back the heart of my children. I had to take back the my marriage. I had to take back the things that the enemy cut in on me. He stole from me. The things he stole from my mother. The things he stole from my grandmother. I had to take back the territory. So this is not just something I'm telling you. This is something that I had to walk out. I had to put on the armor of God. I had to walk this message out so I can edify you with this same thing because I know what it takes. I know what it looks like. And I've been there and I've fought the battle and I've experienced revival, not just in the church house. It's time out for people that are giving messages that they haven't experienced battle uh, 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 victories in private. Thank you, Lord. And I was there too. I was in darkness to where I thought that I had the victory. I thought I was, um, taking back territory, but the Lord began to wake me up and I had to make a decision to partner with him. I realized that I was in the midst of a war and I had to make a decision to partner with God, to put on my armor and to take back territory. And I don't care what you're facing. If God be for you, he is more than the whole world against. Don't you give up. Don't you throw in the towel. Don't you relinquish your weapons. Don't take off that armor. Get in the position of prayer and wage war. Wage war. If you don't know how to do that, Get around people who have won battles. Get around people who are sensitive to the spiritual realm. Get around people who understand what it is to fight. Get around people who don't see in the natural, but they see in the spiritual realm. Get around those who are not carnal and walk after the flesh, but those who are standing in a place with Jesus Christ. Amen. Get around those who will say, come on, we're taking back this territory. Come on, you're coming out of religion. Come on, you're coming closer to God. You're stepping into your destiny, your identity, your calling, your purpose. You're going to see advancement in your ministry. You're going to see things manifest in your business. You're going to see your career excel. You're going to see that abundant life. Jesus didn't die. Jesus didn't die for you to not have victory. Jesus didn't die for your children to not be saved. Jesus didn't die for you to be down and out, depressed, sick. He didn't die for that. Take back your health. That's a territory. Take back your mind. Take back your creativity. Type in the comments, I want it all back. I want it all back. I want it all back. Whatever my mother lost, whatever my grandmother lost, whatever my great grandmother, grandmother lost, whatever territory was stolen from them, because God is a generational God. So guess what? I'm coming out. I'm coming out, Bridget, not only with my stuff, but I'm coming out with what they should have had. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I'm coming out with what my mother didn't get. I'm coming out with what my father didn't get. I'm coming out with the generational blessing. I'm coming out with spoils of war. I just don't want my family. I want every family around me. I want everything I touch to begin to prosper. Go on www.touchdownenterprise.com. www.touchdownsenterprise.com. You want to be in the room. You want to be in the room. You want to be in the room. If you're coming, type, I'll be in the room. I'll be in the room. You want to get there. If you cannot travel, if you live in another state, if it's too much of a burden to get here, you want to get a virtual seat. 
There's going to be so much empowerment in the room. It's going to be so much empowerment in the room. The anointing that these ladies carry, I'm talking about accuracy in the prophetic. I'm talking about ones that love the Lord, who carry the sword of the Lord. These are not just people, again, that I'm just choosing. These are people that have specifically spoke accurate prophetic words in my life during a season of war. They came alongside me and said, woman of God, this. Woman of God, this is what God is saying. These are not just people. These are these are women of weight. What do I mean by that? Women that's just not fluffing you. Women that's just not a pretty face. Women that's just not doing ministry for themselves. They carry an assignment. Women of value. Women of strength. Women of substance. They'll be in the room. I bless you by the matchless name of Jesus Christ. I pray that this inspired you. It edified you. It pushed you to be more in prayer. It pushed you to have strategy on how to win your husband. Get that man in church. Get that man knowing God. Don't relinquish your weapons. Don't leave the secret place until you get what you're asking for. Until you see your son, your daughter serving the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Until you see your marriage come back into alignment. Don't you take those lies. Don't you quit. Don't you give up territory to the enemy. Pray for the hearts because that's where the territory lies. I love you all. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you for getting this message out. I am on assignment by God and I'm here to spread the kingdom news. I'm here to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. So thank you for sharing this to your friends and to your networks. I bless you with uh, the blessing of Christ. I thank you guys for being on here with me. Thank you for your time. I'm a little bit over, but thank you for your time. I love you with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. Be blessed.